Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Flag of the United States The flag of the United States of America, often referred to as the American flag, is the national flag of the United States. It consists of 13 equal horizontal stripes of red alternating with white, with a blue rectangle in the canton bearing 50 small, white, five-pointed stars arranged in nine offset horizontal rows, where rows of six stars alternate with rows of five stars. The 50 stars on the flag represent the 50 states of the United States of America and the 13 stripes represent the 13 British colonies that declared independence from the Kingdom of Great Britain, and became the first states in the U.S. nicknames. For the flag include the Stars and Stripes, Old Glory, and the Star Spangled Banner. History The current design of the U.S. flag is its 27th. The design of the flag has been modified officially 26 times since 1777. The 48-star flag was in effect for 47 years until the 49-star version became official on July 4, 1959. The 50-star flag was ordered by the then-President Eisenhower on August 21, 1959, and was adopted in July 1960. It is the longest used version of the U.S. flag and has been in use for over years. First flag At the time of the Declaration of Independence in July 1776, the Continental Congress would not legally adopt flags with stars, white in a blue field. For another year, the flag contemporaneously known as the Continental Colors has historically been referred to as the first national flag. The Continental Navy raised the colors as the ensign of the fledgling nation in the American War for independence, likely with the expedient of transforming their previous British red ensigns by adding white stripes, and would use this flag until 1777, when it would form the basis for the subsequent de jure designs. The name, Grand Union, was first applied to the Continental Colors by George Preble in his 1872 History of the American Flag. The flag closely resembles the British East India Company flag of the era and Sir Charles Fawcett argued in 1937 that the company flag inspired the design. Both flags could have been easily constructed by adding white stripes to a British red ensign. One of the three maritime flags used throughout the British Empire at the time. However, an East India Company flag could have from 9 to 13 stripes, and was not allowed to be flown outside the Indian Ocean. In any case, both the stripes and the stars have precedence in classical heraldry. Mullets were comparatively rare in early modern heraldry, but an example of mullets representing territorial divisions predating the U.S. flag are those in the coat of arms of Valet of 1618, where seven mullets stood for seven districts. The Flag Resolution of 1777 On June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress passed the Flag Resolution which stated, Resolved, that the flag of the 13 United States be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field, representing a new constellation. Flag Day is now observed on June 14 of each year. While scholars still argue about this, tradition holds that the new flag was first hoisted in June 1777 by the Continental Army at the Middlebrook Encampment. The first official U.S. flag flown during battle was on August 3, 1777, at Fort Schuyler during the Siege of Fort Stanix. Massachusetts reinforcements brought news of the adoption by Congress of the official flag, 
to Fort Schuyler. Soldiers cut up their shirts to make the white stripes scarlet material. To form the red was secured from red flannel petticoats of officers' wives, while material for the blue union was secured from Captain Abraham swore to out's blue cloth coat. A voucher is extant that Captain swore to out of Dutchess County was paid by Congress for his coat. For the flag, the 1777 resolution was most probably meant to define a naval ensign. In the late 18th century, the notion of a national flag did not yet exist, or was only nascent. The flag resolution appears between other resolutions from the Marine Committee. On May 10, 1779, Secretary of the Board of War Richard Peters expressed concern, it is not yet settled what is the standard of the United States. However, the term standard referred to a national standard for the Army of the United States. Each regiment was to carry the national standard in addition to its regimental standard. The national standard was not a reference to the national or naval flag. The flag resolution did not specify any particular arrangement, number of points, nor orientation for the stars and the arrangement of whether the flag had to have seven red stripes and six white ones or vice versa. The appearance was up to the maker of the flag. Some flag makers arranged the stars into one big star, in a circle or in rows, and some replaced a state star with its initial. One arrangement features 13 five-pointed stars arranged in a circle, with the stars arranged pointing outwards from the circle, the so-called Betsy Ross flag. This flag, however, is more likely a flag used for celebrations of anniversaries of the nation's birthday. Experts have dated the earliest known example of this flag to be 1792 in a painting by John Trumbull. Despite the 1777 resolution, the early years of American independence featured many different flags. Most were individually crafted rather than mass-produced. While there are many examples of 13-star arrangements, some of those flags included blue stripes as well as red and white. Benjamin Franklin and John Adams, in a letter dated October 3, 1778, to Ferdinand I of the two Sicilies, described the American flag as consisting of 13 stripes, alternately red, white, and blue. A small square in the upper angle, next the flag staff, is a blue field, with 13 white stars, denoting a new constellation. John Paul Jones used the variety of 13 star flags on his U.S. Navy ships including the well-documented 1779 flags of the Serapis and the Alliance. The Serapis flag had three rows of eight-pointed stars with stripes that were red, white, and blue. The flag for the Alliance, however, had five rows of eight-pointed stars with thirteen red and white stripes, and the white stripes were on the outer edges. Both flags were documented by the Dutch government in October 1779, making them two of the earliest known flags of 13 stars. Designer of the first stars and stripes Francis Hopkinson of New Jersey, a naval flag designer and designer of the Declaration of Independence designed the 1777 flag while he was the chairman of the Continental Navy Board's Middle Department. Sometime between his appointment to that position in November 1776 and the time that the flag resolution was adopted in June 1777, the Navy Board was under the Continental Marine Committee. Not only did Hopkinson claim that he designed the U.S. flag, but he also claimed that he designed a flag for the U.S. Navy. Hopkinson was the only person to have made such a claim during his own lifetime, when he sent a letter and several bills to Congress for his work. These claims are documented in the journals of the Continental Congress and George Hastings' biography of Hopkinson.
Hopkinson initially wrote a letter to Congress via the Continental Board of Admiralty on May 25, 1780. In this letter, he asked for a quarter cask of the public wine as payment for designing the U.S. flag, the seal for the Admiralty Board, the seal for the Treasury Board, continental currency, the Great Seal of the United States, and other devices. However, in three subsequent bills to Congress, Hopkinson asked to be paid in cash, but he did not list his U.S. flag design. Instead, he asked to be paid for designing the great naval flag of the United States. In the first bill, the naval flag of the United States, in the second bill, and the naval flag of the states, in the third, along with the other items. The flag references were generic terms for the naval ensign that Hopkinson had designed, that is, a flag of seven red stripes and six white ones. The predominance of red stripes made the naval flag more visible against the sky on a ship at sea. By contrast, Hopkinson's flag for the United States had seven white stripes and six red ones. In reality, six red stripes laid on a white background. Hopkinson's sketches have not been found but we can make these conclusions because Hopkinson incorporated different stripe arrangements in the Admiralty Seal that he designed in the spring of 1780 and the Great Seal of the United States that he proposed. At the same time, his Admiralty Seal had seven red stripes, whereas, his second U.S. Seal proposal had seven white ones. Hopkinson's flag for the Navy is the one that the nation preferred as the national flag. Remnants of Hopkinson's U.S. flag of seven white stripes can be found in the Great Seal of the United States and the President's Seal. When Hopkinson was chairman of the Navy Board, his position was like that of today's Secretary of the Navy. The payment was not made, however, because it was determined he had already received a salary as a member of Congress. This contradicts the legend of the Betsy Ross flag, which suggests that she sewed the first stars and stripes flag by request of the government in the spring of 1776. Furthermore, a letter from the War Board to George Washington on May 10, 1779, documents that there was still no design established for a national flag for the army's use in battle. The origin of the Stars and Stripes design has been muddled by a story disseminated by the descendants of Betsy Ross. The apocryphal story credits Betsy Ross for sewing the first flag from a pencil sketch handed to her by George Washington. No evidence for this exists either in the diaries of George Washington or in the records of the Continental. Congress. Indeed, nearly a century passed before Ross' grandson, William Canby, first publicly suggested the story in 1870. By her family's own admission, Ross ran an upholstery business, and she had never made a flag as of the supposed visit in June 1776. Furthermore, her grandson admitted that his own search through the journals of Congress and other official records failed to find corroboration of his grandmother's story. The family of Rebecca Young claimed that she sewed the first flag. Young's daughter was Mary Pickersgill, who made the Star Spangled Banner flag. According to rumor, the Washington family coat of arms, shown in a 15th-century window of Selby Abbey, was the origin of the Stars and Stripes. Later Flag Acts In 1795, the number of stars and stripes was increased from 13 to 15. For a time the flag was not changed when subsequent states were admitted, probably because it was thought that this would cause too much clutter. It was the 15-star, 15-stripe flag that inspired Francis Scott Key to write Defense of Fort Him Henry later known as the Star-Spangled Banner, which is now the American National Anthem. The flag is currently on display in the exhibition 
the Star-Spangled Banner, the flag that inspired the national anthem. At the Smithsonian Institution National Museum of American History in a two-story display chamber that protects the flag while it is on view. On April 4, 1818, a plan was passed by Congress at the suggestion of U.S. Naval Captain Samuel C. Reed in which the flag was changed to have 20 stars, with a new star to be added when each new state was admitted. But the number of stripes would be reduced to 13 so as to honor the original colonies. The act specified that new flag designs should become official on 1 July 4 following admission of one or more new states. The most recent change, from 49 stars to 50, occurred in 1960, when the present design was chosen, after Hawaii gained statehood in August 1959. Before that, the admission of Alaska in January 1959 prompted the debut of a short-lived 49-star flag. Prior to the adoption of the 48-star flag in 1912, there was no official arrangement of the stars in the canton, although the U.S. Army and U.S. Navy used standardized designs. Throughout the 19th century there was an abundance of different star patterns, rectangular and circular. On July 4, 2007, the 50-star flag became the version of the flag in longest use, surpassing the 48-star flag that was used from 1912 to 1959. The flower flag arrives in Asia. The U.S. flag was brought to the city of Canton in China in 1784 by the merchant ship Empress of China, which carried a cargo of ginseng. There it gained the designation, Flower Flag, according to a pseudonymous account first published in the Boston Courier and later retold by author and U.S. naval officer George H. Preble, in the above quote. The Chinese words are written phonetically based on spoken Cantonese. The names given were common usage in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Other Asian nations have equivalent terms for America, for example. Chinese now refer to the United States as Mei is short for Miley Jian and Guo means country. So this name is unrelated to the flag. However, the flower flag terminology persists in some places today, for example. American ginseng is called in Chinese, and Citibank, which opened a branch in China in 1902, is known as the U.S. Flag took its first trip around the world in 1787-90 on board the Columbia. William Driver who coined the phrase, Old Glory, took the U.S. flag around the world in 1831-32. The flag attracted the notice of Japanese when an oversized version was carried to Yokohama by the steamer Great Republic as part of a round-the-world journey in 1871. Historical Progression of Designs in the following table depicting the 28 various designs of the United States flag, the star patterns for the flags are merely the usual patterns, often associated with the United States Navy. Canton designs, prior to the proclamation of the 48-star flag, had no official arrangement of the stars. Furthermore, the exact colors of the flag were not standardized until 1934 future of the flag. In the November 2012 U.S. election, Puerto Rico voted to become a U.S. state. However, the legitimacy of the result of this election was disputed. On June 11, 2017, another referendum was held, this time with the result that 97% of voters in Puerto Rico voted for statehood. Similarly in November 2016, a statehood referendum was held in the District of Columbia, where 86% of voters approved the proposal. If a new U.S. state were to be admitted, 
It would require a new design on the flag to accommodate the additional star. Symbolism The modern meaning of the flag was forged in December 1860, when Major Robert Anderson moved the U.S. garrison from Fort Moultrie to Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor. Author Adam Goodhart argues this was the opening move of the American Civil War, and the flag was used throughout northern states to symbolize American nationalism and rejection of secessionism. Before the day, the flag had served mostly as a military ensign, or a convenient marking of American territory, flown from forts, embassies, and ships and displayed on special occasions like American Independence Day. But in the weeks after Major Anderson's surprising stand, it became something different. Suddenly, the Stars and Stripes flew, as it does today, and especially as it did after the September 11th attacks in 2001, from houses, from storefronts, from churches, above the village greens and college quads. For the first time American flags were mass-produced rather than individually stitched. And even so, manufacturers could not keep up with demand. As the long winter of 1861 turned into spring, that old flag meant something new. The abstraction of the Union cause was transfigured into a physical thing, strips of cloth that millions of people would fight for, and many thousands die for greater than the flag of the United States is one of the nation's most widely recognized symbols. Within the United States, flags are frequently displayed not only on public buildings, but on private residences. The flag is a common motif on decals for car windows and clothing ornaments such as badges and lapel pins. Throughout the world the flag has been used in public discourse to refer to the United States. The flag has become a powerful symbol of Americanism, and is proudly flown on many occasions, with giant outdoor flags used by retail outlets to draw customers. Desecration of the flag is considered a public outrage, but remains protected as freedom of speech. In worldwide comparison, Testy noted in 2010 that the United States was not unique in adoring its banner for the flags of Scandinavian countries are also beloved, domesticated, commercialized, and sacralized objects. Creation The man credited with designing the current 50-star American flag was Robert G. Heft. He was 17 years old at the time, and created the flag design in 1958 as a high school class project while living with his grandparents in Ohio. He received a B- on the project. According to Heft, his history teacher honored their agreement to change his grade to an A after his design was selected. Specifications The basic design of the current flag is specified by outlines the addition of new stars to represent new states. The specification gives the following values, these specifications are contained in an executive order which, strictly speaking, governs only flags made for or by the U.S. federal government. In practice, most U.S. national flags available for sale to the public have a different width to height ratio, common sizes are or, 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 or. Even flags flown over the U.S. Capitol for sale to the public through representatives or senators are provided in these sizes. Flags that are made to the prescribed 1.9 ratio are often referred to as G-spec flags. Colors The exact red, white, and blue colors to be used in the flag are specified with reference to the cow standard color reference of America, 10th edition. Specifically, the colors are white, old glory red, and old glory blue. The CIE coordinates for the colors of the 9th edition of the standard color card were formally specified in JOSA in 
1946. These colors form the standard for cloth, and there is no perfect way to convert them to RGB for display on screen or CMYK for printing. The relative coordinates in the following table were found by scaling the luminous reflectance relative to the flag's white. As with the design, the official colors are only officially required for flags produced for the U.S. Federal government, and other colors are often used for mass market flags, printed reproductions, and other products intended to evoke flag colors. The practice of using more saturated colors than the official cloth is not new, as Taylor, Noche, and Granville wrote in 1950. The color of the official wool bunting of the blue field is a very dark blue, but printed reproductions of the flag, as well as merchandise supposed to match the flag, present the color as a deep blue much brighter than the official wool. Sometimes, Pantone matching system approximations to the flag colors are used. One set was given on the website of the U.S. Embassy in London as early as 1998, the website of the U.S. Embassy in Stockholm claimed in 2001 that those had been suggested by Pantone, and that the U.S. government printing office preferred a different set. A third red was suggested by a California military department document in 2002. In 2001, the Texas legislature specified that the colors of the Texas flag should be the same colors used in the United States flag, and defined as numbers 193 and 281 of the Pantone matching system. The 49 and 50 Star Unions When Alaska and Hawaii were being considered for statehood in the 1950s, more than 1,500 designs were submitted to President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Although some of them were 49-star versions, the vast majority were 50-star proposals. At least three of these designs were identical to the present design of the 50-star flag. At the time, credit was given by the Executive Department to the United States Army Institute of Heraldry for the design of these proposals, one created by 17-year-old Robert G. Heft in 1958 as a school project received the most publicity. His mother was a seamstress, but refused to do any of the work for him. He originally received A.B. for the project. After discussing the grade with his teacher, it was agreed that if the flag was accepted by Congress, the grade would be reconsidered. Heft's flag design was chosen and adopted by presidential proclamation after Alaska and before Hawaii was admitted into the Union in 1959. According to Heft, his teacher did keep to their agreement and changed his grade to an A for the project. The 49 and 50 star flags were each flown for the first time at Fort McHenry on Independence Day in 1959 and 1960 respectively. Decoration Traditionally, the flag may be decorated with golden fringe surrounding the perimeter of the flag as long as it does not deface the flag. Proper ceremonial displays of the flag, such as those in parades or on indoor posts, often use fringe to enhance the appearance of the flag. The first recorded use of fringe on a flag dates from 1835, and the Army used it officially in 1895. No specific law governs the legality of fringe, but a 1925 opinion of the Attorney General addresses the use of fringe, is at the discretion of the Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, as quoted from footnote in previous volumes of Title IV of the United States Code law books and as a source for claims that such a flag is a military ensign not civilian. However, according to the Army Institute of Heraldry, which has official custody of the flag designs, 
and makes any change ordered, there are no implications of symbolism in the use of fringe. Several federal courts have upheld this conclusion, most recently and forcefully in Colorado v. Drew, a Colorado Court of Appeals judgment that was released in May 2010. Traditionally, the Army and Air Force use a fringed national color for parade, color guard and indoor display, while the sea services use a fringeless national color for all occasions display and use. The flag is customarily flown year-round at most public buildings, and it is not unusual to find private houses flying full-size flags. Some private use is year-round, but becomes widespread on civic holidays like Memorial Day, Veterans Day, President's Day, Flag Day, and on Independence Day. On Memorial Day it is common to place small flags by war memorials and next to the graves of U.S. war veterans. Also on Memorial Day it is common to fly the flag at half-staff until noon in remembrance of those who lost their lives fighting in U.S. wars. Flag Etiquette the United States Flag Code outlines certain guidelines for the use, display, and disposal of the flag. For example, the flag should never be dipped to any person or thing, unless it is the ensign responding to a salute from a ship of a foreign nation. This tradition may come from the 1908 Summer Olympics in London, where countries were asked to dip their flag to King Edward VII, the American flag bearer did not. Team Captain Martin Sheridan is famously quoted as saying, this flag dips to no earthly king. Though the true provenance of this quotation is unclear, the flag should never be allowed to touch the ground and, if flown at night, must be illuminated. If the edges become tattered through wear, the flag should be repaired or replaced. When a flag is so tattered that it can no longer serve as a symbol of the United States, it should be destroyed in a dignified manner, preferably by burning. The American Legion and other organizations regularly conduct flag retirement ceremonies, often on Flag Day, June 14. The Flag Code prohibits using the flag for any advertising purpose and also states that the flag should not be embroidered, printed, or otherwise impressed on such articles as cushions, handkerchiefs, napkins, boxes, or anything intended to be discarded after temporary use. Both of these codes are generally ignored, almost always without comment. Section 8 Entitled Respect for Flag states in part, the flag should never be used as wearing apparel bedding, or drapery, and, no part of the flag should ever be used as a costume or athletic uniform. Section 3 of the Flag Code defines, the flag as anything, by which the average person seeing the same without deliberation may believe the same. To represent the flag of the United States of America, an additional part of Section 8 respect for flag, that is frequently violated. At sporting events is part, the flag should never be carried flat or horizontally, but always aloft and free. Although the flag code is U.S. federal law, there is no penalty for a private citizen or group failing to comply with the flag code, and it is not widely enforced. Indeed, punitive enforcement would conflict with the First Amendment right to freedom of speech passage of the proposed flag desecration amendment would overrule legal precedent that has been established. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.